So this is my presentation on the leader member exchange theory. Uh, this is going over my research paper. So starting off, we have the background introduction. Leader member exchange theory is drawn from principles from the social exchange theory. It focuses on dyads or relationships between leaders and followers. There are also in-group exchanges, which are between the leader and the inner circle, or you know the leader's closer group of individuals. And then there are out-group exchanges, which are between the leader and subordinates in a more transactional form. So what is leader-member exchange? Leader-member exchange is transactional as the leader interacts with the follower. It is also transformational as the, as the relationship between the leader and the member changes over time. It begins as a transaction and eventually evolves into a transformational relationship. What this presentation includes is four steps of LMX theory, which are the discovery of differentiated dyads, the focus on relationship and its outcomes, the description of the dyadic relationship, and the expansion of dyadic relationship to groups and network levels. And then there's also the evaluation of each stage, which is my personal evaluation of each stage. And then there will also be, uh, at the end, there's the limitations of LMX theory and suggestions for future research. Moving forward, stage one, which is the, diff the discovery of differential dyads, uh, could also be called vertical dyad linkage. Now, vertical dyad linkage is the relationship between the leader and member and how it di differentiates from the follower to follower. So basically, that's saying that the, the relationship between the leader and the follower is different in every relationship. And then the, v the VDL, or vertical dyad linkage model, was developed by Gran and William Scheinman in 1978, and they say... The hypothesis derived from the vertical dyad linkage model of the leadership development and investigated in this study is that agreement between a leader and a member regarding the meaning of certain mutually experienced events and situations will vary as a positive function of the quality of their dyadic exchanges. So basically what that's saying is that they developed this, this dyad linkage mod model of leadership, and it's about the exchanges between the leader and the follower or member. And then later research by George Grant and Ulvien in 1995 tested the VDL model that, that Grant originally came up with in 78 and identified it as an official step in the evolution of LMX theory. In my evaluation of this vertical dyad linkage model, I say that in 1995, the study by Gran and Ulbain showed that the findings were consistent with the model that was developed in 1978 by Gran and Scheiman. So there's that 17 year difference between the 78 study and the 95 study, and that model held up over time and was used with proper research methods in their research. So just the fact that not only has that model survived over 17 years, but even now to today and further studies that have happened over the years they've only confirmed the VDL model as a stage of LMX theory. Stage two, which is the focus of relationship and its outcomes, could also be called the exchange itself, and it's about the exchange between the leader and the follower. Uh, these three people, Russell, Marie, and Howard, all conducted a study relating 
effective events theory, which is AET, to the development of LMX. They identified three characteristics of the relationship between the two theories, role-taking, role role-making, and role-routinization. So the role-taking uh, step is the leader takes the role as the leader and initiates his relationship with the member. And then following on from that, the member takes the role as the follower and receives the leader's pursuit of a relationship. And this occurs on the individual level. The role making portion of this uh, second stage is the leader and the member proceeding through transactional exchanges. So they, they go on and the leader does his transactional exchange with the member. And then effective development is the leader and member emotionally enter and training themselves through interaction with each other. And this occurs at the dyadic level. So the, the last stage on role taking occurs on the individual level. Each person is acting on their own. The second stage of role making occurs at the dyadic level with the, the leader and the member interacting with each other. Then the third stage or the third step in this is role routinization. So this is just the, the relationship is now stable between the member and the leader and the member makes subtle changes in the relationship due to their surrounding group of people. And so you have this environment where you have uh, person A has a relationship, a dyadic relationship with the leader. Person B has a dyadic relationship. Person C has a dyadic relationship. And so person C might make subtle changes in their relationship with their leader based on the other relationships in their group. And so the leader sort the leader also sorts out all the relationships, all the his individual relationships with each member. He sorts those people into in groups and out groups. The in groups, remember, are the people who are closest to the leader, the close friends and acquaintances. The out groups are more of just sub subordinates to the leader. And this occurs at the group level. My evaluation of the Second stage is essentially, I said that research by the, the three people was confirmed by Grant and Olbein in this quote. They say, based on the findings in the stage of investigation, the centroid concept of LMX research may be described as one development of LMX relationships is influenced by characteristics and behaviors of leaders and members and occurs through the role-making process, right, there's your role-making, and then two, higher quality LMX relationships have very positive outcomes for leaders, followers, work units, and or the organization in general. Stage three is the description of dyadic relationship, and that's essentially the process of leadership making. <clears throat> So this moves beyond the in-groups and out-groups, and it goes to the one-on-one -on -one relationships between the leader and the members. Green and Obain stated uh, they studied the practical side of relationships, so they said that thus, based on these studies, the leadership-making model was developed to identify the importance of generating more high-quality relationships within organizations and to describe a process for how these may be realized in practice. So that's essentially saying how the, the groups, it's more about a practical side of the relationship making process and the, making a follower into a leader. And Gray and Olbain identified three phases in the leadership making model. So this leadership making model includes the stranger phase, the acquaintance phase, and the maturity phase. So for the stranger phase, this happens immediately, 
right? When the when the leader and the member both first meet each other, there's interaction between the the leader and the member, and that interaction is transactional in nature because they don't necessarily know each other. So the it's kind of a cash and carry model where the leader makes his commands, the follower executes, and it's a contractual exchange between the two. So it's a, a role finding type of phase, which also happens to be a very low quality of exchange because there's no transformational exchange there. Then the acquaintance phase, this comes uh, with some delay after the initial stranger phase. Uh, and so this happens when the leader and the member start getting to know each other. And so there's an offer from the leader for a deeper relationship, which is accepted by the follower. And this begins to make the transactional exchange into more of a transformational exchange. So the social exchanges begin to increase between the leader and the member. Right, they're not just work exchanges, they're social exchanges too. And the leader and the member exchange information and resources, both at a personal level and at a work level. And this constitutes a medium quality of exchange. Now the maturity phase is the, the final phase in the relationship between the leader and the follower, and this grows over a long period of time, right? So it never really ends, but it does have its beginning once it starts to develop further. So this is when the, the, the relationship is fully developed and it's in uh, a transformation. There's now tr transformational exchanges going on between the leader and the follower. This relationship is also highly developed. Um, there are high, highly developed exchanges between the leader and the member. And then there's also a mutual respect between the leader and member. So this, this would constitute a very high quality of exchange. Following on my evaluation of this third stage of the evolution of the leader-member exchange theory is that there's a strong connection between the vertical dyad linkage model in the second stage and the leadership making model in the third stage. And so it kind of naturally flows over time from stage two to stage three. The research presented in this stage also was of a qualitative nature, not just a quantitative nature, right? The, the first two stages were more of a quantitative nature of study, whereas this stage three is more of a qualitative type, and it's uh, going over the practical aspects of that uh, leadership making model. So I think it's an overall good progression of the research on LMX theory. The fourth stage is the expansion of dyadic relationship to the group and network levels. So it's a, like a team building stage. So it's taking up those, those teams of dyadic relationships within an organization and making them work together on an organizational network level. So research by Grain and Olbain revealed that up to this point, most of the work on LMX was focused on LMX relationships and dyads within work groups and independent dyads. Within the complex organizations, however, this is not representative of the nature of leadership situations, which are characterized most often by a leader and multiple members working together in some sort of interacting collectivity. So the research shifted to studying how relationships between the leader and each member works together in a network of ways for the success of an organization. Continuing on with this fourth stage, organizational success is dependent on the leaders and the members acting within their defined roles. So if the leader and the member are not acting within their roles, that would mean that they're not functioning well or effectively and therefore the the network at the network or organizational level the organization is going to fail or not do as well so higher quality the result of the studies and the research 
revealed that higher quality dyadic relationships leads to better work performance for each individual relationship. And then those better performances in the individual dyadic relationships leads to a higher performance at the group level. And that higher performance at the group level leads to better performance at the organizational network level. My evaluation of stage four is that stage four is still being researched today. So it's not a concluded study like the other three stages. It's still open-ended, there's no end to it yet. We have, what we have found, however, from stage four is that it seems to be dependable and accurate research information. There hasn't been any significant issue found with the research in stage four. Grain and Obain comp compiled their information in 1995, and they said that to date, we are not aware of any empirical inv investigations of leadership at this level. This is because, in contrast to the earlier stages, stage four is in its infancy. Very little empirical investigation has occurred at this level, and questions abound. So the limitations of LMX theory, uh, the, the biggest challenge to this theory is that it's still in the process of development. So for people who bring up issues such as, oh, hey, this, this theory hasn't been fully tested. Well, that's kind of true in a way, is that it hasn't been fully tested. Not all the different implications and applications of this theory have been found out in research. However, the research on the subject has also shifted to some degree at every stage in the evolution of the theory. So, you know, I said before that it shifted from a not only a transactional relationship to a transformational relationship, but also the research shifted from a quantitative research to a qualitative research. And then the theory will also continue to change and shift direction as new research comes out. Suggestions for future research. So there's an overabundance of research on stages one and two, and they are they have been found to be pretty solid, pretty foundational. There hasn't been any issues discovered with that research. It was all done right and in the right manner. And so we can say that it's, it's solid. We don't have to do any further research on stages one and two. However, more research is needed on stages three and four since three, since stage three is about the practical implications, um, in the, the, situations that this research method is applied, those things change over time, right? Leadership 20 years ago wasn't the same as it is today. So that's naturally going to change over time. So we need a lot more research now on stage three so that we can compare it with research on stage three back 20, 30 years ago. And then we also need more research on stage four because it's still in the beginnings of its research, relatively speaking. In conclusion, the four stages of the evolution of LMX theory have been beneficial over the years, right? It's still a fairly new theory, and yet it has already risen to the top as one of the most successful leadership theories of all time. Many companies, uh, many Organizations are using this research, right? They're using this theory. And LMX is not merely theoretical like most other leadership theories, like most other uh, theories that organizations use, but it also has the practical applications as discussed in the, in the second two stages. So it's both theoretical and practical, which makes it such an, a successful theory. And then again, many, many companies and organizations continue to use this theory today with a great deal of success. And that is my presentation on LMX theory. Thank you.